Hey guys, what's going on? All right, so I went ahead and I sold a racket this weekend. The brand name is Babylot. And I picked this up at Desert Industries for $15. I sold it for $115 on eBay, plus about eh, 20 or some dollars in shipping. So I'll double check that, but that's about what they paid in shipping for Priority Mail. It's headed to Hawaii. Um, if you're out thrifting, look for that brand name Babylot. Uh, that brand name is actually pretty popular on eBay. And if you have a used racket, the used ones sell for over a hundred bucks, typically on average each. So even used, they're a great find. And this happens to be a used one. So you basically got a hundred dollar bill in your hands if you uh, happen to find one of these while you're out and about. I wasn't familiar with the name. I've, I've sold all kinds of rackets, but this was literally, literally the first time running into the name Babylot. So. Anywho, I thought maybe you guys would want to see how I package and ship this. So I'll kind of show you how I do that. So first things first, I always wrap everything in plastic. Uh, the reason I do that is uh, to keep, you know, any moisture off it in case the, uh, you know, post office leaves it outside or, you know, if I'm packaging it and I happen to get a little tape on the product on accident, like I accidentally over tape it. Um, that's also why I use the plastic. Uh, man, I hate getting stuff from customers where they tape directly on the product. That absolutely drives me nuts. So I'm sure, you know, it drives them nuts because I guarantee they don't have the same tools that we do. So they probably get it and just have to pick at it and pick at it. And I would think that it would drive them nuts like it drives me nuts. So... Anywho, so you can see I use two different size bags. I use one big bag for the top, and I just use a smaller one, and I just kind of loosely tape it on there to hold it. I don't have a bag that fits this entire thing end to end. I just don't carry a bag that big. So the boxes that I use are priority mail boxes, and it's a thinner box. I'll show you there, it's a thinner box. It is 12.25 by 2.85, or yeah, 2.875 by 13.6875. I'll put the number on here. So I'll put, you know, I'll put, I'll show you what number it is as far as like the USPS website goes so that you don't have to remember those dimensions. You can just go, oh, I need a number six or something like that. Um, I forget which number this is, but I will look it up and I'll, I'll put it on screen for you. Okay, so these are the boxes I use. I use three of them. I use one for the top, one for the bottom, and then I wrap one around the middle for stability because once you have the top and the bottom box on, these just barely overlap so that they don't crack like an egg. I wrap one around the middle for stability. So I'll kind of show you that. And then I'll also show you kind of what I do to one of the boxes. I notch one of the boxes so that it holds the racket nice and stable in the boxes. So we'll do that in a second. But first things first, let's bubble wrap this guy. I usually just bubble wrap the top. Sometimes I'll bubble wrap around the handle if I'm feeling frisky, but today I'm just gonna bubble wrap the top. So let me grab that stuff. All right, so I've got the bubble wrap here. I'm just gonna wrap it loosely over the top. And again, grab a little bit more tape here. And again, this is why I wrap things in plastic is because if I over tape or do something weird, it doesn't end up on the product. This tape gun's driving me a little bit nuts. It's kind of kicking out tape a little off center, so it's a little wrinkled. So it's, uh, it's driving me a little, little, little batty. It's got a little wrinkle in it. Okay, so we'll just do that. And like I said, I typically just wrap the top. I don't usually wrap the bottom, so I'll usually keep that unwrapped. So we've got that done. So now it's time to throw it in a box. So first thing I do with the box is I assemble it, and this will be the box that goes on the bottom. And the box that goes on the bottom, what I do is I close the flaps, seal them down, I cut notches right in the middle and lift the middle portion up and I actually cut some slits right here too to give it a little flexibility so what we'll end up doing is we'll take the racket and we'll throw it in the middle here and it will give it some nice uh, side to side stability so that way you know it's not floating all over the place so that's step number one and then those notches let, let you push it down in there a little bit to the bottom of the box so you can kind of get it in there if need be so 
So that's that. So that's box number one. Box number two, we just slip on top of it. And you're going to try and get these little, little uh, tabs that you made inside, hopefully. There you go. And it just overlaps ever so slightly. It's not like it's, you know, way over the top. So that's why we use that, that middle box later. So let's just give it just a little bit of tape here. Just for a little strength. Do the same thing on this side. All right, and then I get, get a little bit more crazy with the tape. Try and seal these together best I can. So there you go. So now these two are together. And then the final step is I wrap one box around the middle. I'll show you how I do that. The reason I do that is because, you know, this is just overlapping ever so slightly. So if it hits something, it may kind of crack it like an egg. So that's why I overlap. Now to cut the box, I use this little zip snip thing. Um, you can use whatever you want. You can use a box knife, doesn't matter. So I go ahead and use that. And uh, I just basically, you know, cut one end here, or cut one edge, I should say. That, wrap it around the middle. And it's gonna be a little bit oversized or a little bit tight, I should say, um, you know, which is normal. But, um, you know, I just, this is just for stability. Just tape it down. And like I said, I get a little more crazy with the tape and make sure the flaps are, you know, down. Uh, both sides. That, there you go. So that's pretty much how I do it. Throw a label on it, weigh it, measure it, and it's good to go. And this is how I always ship tennis rackets. So I always ship it this way. I have never shipped it any other way than this. You know, hypothetically, you could use like a uh, large flat rate box, but the large flat rate boxes I have aren't quite wide enough for these rackets. So that's why I use these boxes. Um, you know, maybe there's a large flat rate that's, that's a little wider or something like that. Um, you're not technically supposed to use, you know, large flat rates if you're not shipping large flat rate. Um, but you know, people do, I mean, they, they'll use it and they'll t take white plastic or white poly bags and they'll put them around the outside, tape those down and just, just reuse them just cause the box is the right size. But this has been good for what I need to do. And, uh, this is, like I said, this is how I always do it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Uh, let me know if you'd like to see more packaging videos, go ahead, like subscribe. All that good stuff, still growing the channel. It's taking time, man, but you know, still doing it. So make sure you like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye bye.